Mr. B here, bringing you another wonderful math video on completing the square. Uh, so a lot of times students ask me uh, where and when should we complete the square. Uh, basically there's two situations where you'd want to complete the square. The first situation is if you're solving a quadratic. So everyone knows, you know, or most people know how to use the quadratic formula, but there's lots of other ways to solve quadratics. Uh, completing the square is one of them, probably one of the more f unfrequently used techniques, but that's one place you could use complete the square is solving the quadratic. Um, and the second one, which is probably the most common um, use of it, is changing forms. So when you want to change forms, and specifically, if you want to go from this form, which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, it has many names. My students call it standard form. When I learned it back when I was in high school, it was called general form. And completing the square allows us to go from this form to what my students know as vertex form, which is y is equal to a x minus p squared plus q. So where p and q are the vertex of my quadratic. So that's probably the most useful form of it. I'll take you through uh, applications of both, and hopefully we can get the uh, kind of get the idea of where you might want to use it. Now, how I complete the square is I use um, one of the properties of a perfect square trinomial, and all a perfect square trinomial is a trinomial that has identical uh, factors. So an example would be you know uh, x plus one, and then x plus one. That's example exa an example of a perfect square trinomial because if we had a square, you know, a square has silence that would be the same. So we could represent, you know, the silence of the square with the x plus one and x plus one. Um, you know, if this was in this form, in standard form, you know, it'd look like x squared plus two x plus one. So, you know, this is just the factored form of this guy. Um, now the formula I use, and probably a lot of your teachers probably use this as well, is uh, uses a property of perfect square trinomials, which is that if we divide the b term, this guy right here, the one next to the x, by 2, and then square it, we get the c term. So we go b divided by 2, and then we square it, we get c. So you can try it with this one, you know. 2 divided by 2 is 1 squared. 1 squared is just 1, so it works for this one. But, but this is actually a really important formula for completing the square. So this is one you might want to put in your back pocket and uh, you know remember for when we're doing these techniques. So let's try an example of solving, and then we'll do one where we change forms. Oh, I already got something written here. All right, let me erase it. All right, so let's see. Um, so... The first step you guys just saw, which I usually do, is I usually group my x squared and my x terms together. And that just helps me stay neat and organized. Um, you know, really there's no reason why. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but, you know, I like to do it. Uh, so I group my first two terms together. This is what I'm, these two first two terms, and this is probably why I do it, uh, this is what I'm going to turn into the perfect square trinomial, this guy right here. So this x squared minus 4x, I'm going to find the c value that turns it into a perfect square trinomial. So in order to find that c value, I'll have to use this guy. c is equal to b over 2 squared. So what I'll do is I'll rewrite this. x squared minus 4x plus something, that's my c term, minus 2. And then what I need to remember is that if I'm adding something in here, in order to keep the equality of the situation, I need to make sure that I, you know, I subtract off that same thing over here, and that's equal to zero. So the number that I put in here will be positive, and here will be subtract that positive number away. So let's see what I do. So I'm just going to move this over a smidgen. So I got a bit more space to work with over here. So now I'm going to find my C value. So if I go, um, so my, my B value in this case is negative 4. So I go negative 4 divided by 2 looks like negative 1. Squared. 
negative 4 divided by 2, last time I checked, was still negative 2 squared, and then negative 2 squared is 4. So what I'll put here is plus 4, and now what I'll put here is subtract 4, or you know minus 4, or whatever you want to think of it as, plus negative, or subtract positive. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know simplify this a little bit. I'm going to combine these two numbers. That's going to be minus 6. But what I'm going to do with this over here is this is now a perfect square trinomial. So I'll rewrite it here just to make life a little bit easier for us. So I'll go x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 6 is equal to 0. So what I want to do with this is I want to write this um, as, um, you know, I want to factor it essentially. Write it as a, my two binomials or my one binomial because it's a perfect square. Um, so, I have to think, you know, how do I factor this? So you got to think back to when you're in grade 10 or something. Um, what adds to give me negative 4 and multiplies to give me 4? So, you know, really not that high of a problem. The number is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. But also, from doing our little calculation over here, the number that we'll need is always over here this guy this guy right here so after we use our formula that number will always be there so if I go now to factor this it looks like this x minus 2 times x minus 2 the same factor for both uh, subtract 6 is equal to 0 so then what I can do is now I can rewrite this to make it look even even neater so I have x minus 2 squared minus 6 is equal to 0. So now I have this basically it looks a lot like my vertex form that I was using um, except the fact that I don't have the y. So once I have that done now I can go ahead and solve my equation. So the first thing I'll do is you know I'll add 6 to both sides so plus 6 plus 6 so I get left with you know x minus x minus 2 squared is equal to 6. So then in order to get rid of this squared, what I'll do is I'll square root both sides. Important thing to recognize is when I square root, I have plus or minus. Every time every quadratic has two solutions. That's where they come from, the plus or minus of the square root. So this square root cancels because a square root and a squared cancels. So I'm left with x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus root 6 oh. hang on there guys alright so then I have um, you know add 2 to both sides so I have x is equal to so plus 2 over here plus 2 I like to put the 2 first just makes it look neat to me so I have 2 plus or minus root 6 and there she is beautiful x is equal to 2 plus or minus root 6. So that's the solution to the equation that I started with up here. So, you know, hopefully you get the idea from it, but really the key to this question is this guy. C is equal to b over 2 squared. All right, so uh, let's try one more. So for this guy, um, the only real difference between the previous one and this one is the fact that we have a 3 in front of my x squared term, which does make life a little bit complicated, um, but we can still manage using our technique. So I'll rewrite my formula over here. C is equal to b over 2, all squared. And so what we do is we group the first two terms, just like last time. There she is in brackets. So then what I like to do is, you know, there are other ways of doing it, but this is what I do, so if you want to use that way you can, is to take out whatever is in front of my x squared. So no matter what it is, no matter what kind of numbers it gives us, take it out, make life easier for us. So let's take a 3 out of this set of brackets here. So if it was negative, I'd take out the negative 2. Um, so it becomes inside here, becomes x squared. Minus. Now the 5 doesn't divide by 3, so we'll just re leave it as 5 over 3. So this is a harder example because we'll have some fractions involved. Um, x minus 1 is equal to 0. 
So now my B term is 5 over 3, which is a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. That's all we can do. Um, sometimes this, you'll get questions like these, so you need to see them. All right, so now what we do is exactly the same as last time. We're going to try to find that value of C that makes this a perfect square trinomial. So we have 3x squared minus 5 over 3x plus blank minus 1 plus blank is equal to 0. So again, that number comes from this formula, whatever the blank is. So, and actually, I'll change that plus there because, you know, I don't want to confuse everybody. We used minus last time, so we'll do the same thing here. Now, we got to kind of be careful. You know, depending on what's here, um, you know, it might be plus or minus. If this was a negative, you'll see in a second. All right, so um, we get 5 over 3 divided by 2 squared. So 5 over 3 divided by 2 is 5 over 6 squared. And then 5 over 6 squared is 25 over 36. So it doesn't look pretty, but it is what it is. So what I'll add in here is 25 over 36. Now, what I'm actually adding is not 25 over 36. It's actually 3 times 25 over 36. So what I actually put over here is not 25 over 36, it's 75 over 36. So we have to be really careful that we make sure that we adjust that because that's the only thing that makes this different, this question different from the last one is that three in front and that's how it makes a difference. So I'm just gonna check to see if that reduces down 75 over 36. So it becomes 25 over 12. That makes our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to erase that just to get 25 over 12 there. I don't know. Maybe it does make our life easier. We'll see. So now, again, what I need to do with this guy right here is I need to factor it. So I'm going to skip a few steps this time. Um, and obviously, factoring this guy will be tough if you just had to have a straight-up question. But we have a little inside information. We have this guy over here, right? So this guy is our factored term. So, you know, essentially what um, what we have, and I see a mistake here already. Crap. Um, this should be negative 5 over 3. So that's not a big deal. And that makes that negative, but that's still positive. All right, so got to be watching. Hopefully you picked up on that. All right, so... Um, so what we have is negative 5 over 6 right here. So x minus 5 over 6 squared minus, and then we'll do this guy right here. So just go negative 1, subtract 25 over 12. Negative 1, subtract 25 over 12. So if you weren't allowed to use calculators, you would have to, you know, get creative with how to do that guy. So that becomes... Uh, 37 over 12. I just threw that in my calculator and it shot back the answer. And then we're done. Essentially, we got the, the, the hardest part done. We've completed the square on this guy. So now if we want to solve it, what we have to do is, um, you know, the same process as last time. Let's take this across to the other side. So we end up with 3x minus 5 over 6 squared is equal to 37 over 12. Then we'll divide both sides by 3. So we end up with x minus 5 over 6 squared is equal to 37 or 36 over 37. 37 over 36. Um, 37 over 36. And then what I'll do is I'll just square both sides, so that leaves me with x minus 5 over 6 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 37 over 36. And then um, I can take that, subtract 5 over 6 to the other side, or negative 5 over 6, and leaves me with 5 over 6 plus or minus square root of 37. And the square root of 36 is just 6. So there, and if your teacher's picky about stuff like this and they want it over one denominator, you can write it as 5 plus or minus 37 over 
number six. And there she is. So that is how you solve a quadratic with completing the square. And this video is running a little long, so what I'm going to do is I'll make another video for changing forms. You can check that one out if that's what you want it. Um, I hope this helped, and uh, if you got any questions, go ahead and post some comments. Make sure you subscribe, and I will talk to you later.